What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Jay Renee, with Prison Ride Radio. I hope that you're doing well. This afternoon, we got a brother on the phone by the name of Jay Derek Robinson, and he's going to talk to us about his over-sentencing, and also something called de facto life sentences. Um, y'all may not be familiar with that, so hopefully we're going to get some insight. So we're going to holler at the brother and see what's going on, see if we can help him out. All right, All right bro. Thanks for um, pulling up on us. How you doing? Yeah. I'm doing all right, Jay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Jay, uh, for for the record, um, my first name is Derek. Did you say Jay? Yeah. I'm uh, Okay, I'm not really sure where I got that from. So it's just De- Derek Robinson. It, it's Derek Robinson, right. Do you need my middle name? If you'd like to include it, sure. Derek Edward Robinson. Edward. All right. Derek Edward Robinson. Edward Robinson. Right. Okay. Derek Edward Robinson. Yeah, uh-huh. that's my name. Correct. All right. Well, thank you, brother. Um, you will. So we want to get into what's going on with you. So before we get to that part, tell the people a little bit about yourself and where you're from. Okay, um, my name is Derek Robinson. Um, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I've uh, been locked up since uh, 1999 for armed um, robbery charge. Um, I'm 53 years old. At the time I committed this uh, crime, I was 27 years old. Um, I grew in Atlanta all my life. Um, unfortunately, you know, uh, I wound up in a you know prison because of my uh, wrong path. Um, but I'm not absolutely. I'm not here claiming absolute innocence. I'm here to really um, reach out to uh, someone uh, to persuade the people responsible holding me in here the parole board whoever they may be um that i have served my time i have served my debt to society and um i am a changed man um i did nothing to deserve the 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 excessive sentence that i was that was handed down to me um in douglas county Mm -hmm. uh maybe about seven to eight minutes from atlanta uh, where this incident occurred 24 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, it was um, it was at a trial. I went to trial, um, but prior to that, I was offered 20 to 10 years, 20 to 10 years. And I was naive, I was foolish, I was crazy not to take this plea. And the only reason for that, because I did not want to come back to prison because this, that would be my second felony. Um, my first felony, um, it was just a slap on the wrist. I spent three years for a theft charge, um, I think, in driving without license. Um, but however, um, three years later, when I committed this crime, um, like I said, they, they tried to offer me 10 years. Mm-hmm. I would have to do 10 year max for this armed robbery. I um, committed this crime in a Subway restaurant of Lithia Springs, like I said, in Douglasville, Douglas County, Georgia. And um, I feel real remorse about it now. You know, um, to the victims, I have asked for forgiveness um, for what I have done. Um, But like I say, the way that the judicial system, the justice system, did me, uh, the judge, um, the DA, um, you know, all this time that I have served and still serving, um, it's too excessive. Um, at the time of the incident, um, like I say, I, I entered this subway store and um, at gunpoint, I ordered eight people two um two employees and um six customers was in the store at the time um i ordered them to a unisex bathroom in the back of the store i took the manager out and i took the money i instructed her to get the money from the register and then we went to the um office and um, she didn't have any money in the safe. So 
Uh, she didn't know the combination for it or whatnot. I tried to pressure her to give it to me. She wouldn't give it to me. So I didn't believe her, but I just, you know, okay. I put her back in the, in the uh, bathroom with the other uh, victims. The other six, I mean, the other seven victims. I'm sorry. And um, I ordered some of the people handed over valuables to me. Okay. Um, at gunpoint inside the bathroom. Okay. After. <laughs> I can't hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, but, yeah. After taking the valuables from the victims in the UNICEF bathroom, um, I left. I cut off the lights. I told anyone to not leave this restroom. Um, I shut the door. I left the store. I left the store without any um, acting out any violence other than just threatening the victims. There was no gunshots. There was no one got killed. Um, after I left the store, uh, I got in my car and I, I fled the scene. Okay. Um, I actually became um, a suspect a week later. And um, I don't really want to get into the details of that. Um, but simply, it was just somebody who I knew that I told them I done the crime, that robbery. Mm-hmm. They um, turned state on me. They snitched on me, and um, they went to the authorities, and they told them where I was, and I got arrested. Okay. Um, this was 1999. Um, I've been here ever since then. Um and how much time did they how much time did they give you they gave me like they gave me nine life sentences and this is what this is so crazy about it when i came into the store i didn't see but eight people Mm -hmm. however when i got arrested and i was uh i was appointed uh, um a counselor or you know uh, um, a public defender you know because i couldn't afford to get my own a lawyer so i had to uh get a retained counsel from the from the from the county they gave me a, a public defender and uh, she came with a discovery about the whole case the statements from the witness, witnesses and everything and I, I just discovered that it was another employee in the back of the store at the time that wasn't even involved in this robbery okay but however she was included in the indictment this was a 20 count indictment i was charged and um convicted and prosecuted of nine armed robberies nine armed robberies and nine kidnappings they also charged me, in addition to that, possession of a firearm during the commission of a crime and possession of a firearm by a convicted felony. Mm-hmm. So I received nine counts of armed robbery, nine counts of kidnapping, and two gun charges, possession of a firearm and possession of a firearm during the commission of a crime and possession of a firearm by a convicted felony. Those were five year sentences each. Okay. They gave me five years sentences each on those gun charges, gave me nine life sentences with parole, and gave me 20 years for kidnapping. Now, what they did, they merged all the kidnappings together. They merged all the nine kidnappings together. Okay. It came out to 20 years. So, in all, I got nine life sentences, sentences for armed robbery consecutive. Mm. That meaning that I would have to do 10 years consecutive for each armed robbery. Right. 90. 90 years. 90 years. You went out again, brother. You went out again. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. That's 90 years for the armed robbery. That's 20 years. 
five years additional for the for the for the gun charges. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, the only thing I, you know, the only illegal issue I got is, I wouldn't say the only illegal issue, but the legal issue that I got as far as the conviction is concerned, what I'm not guilty of is that employee that was in the store at the time that wasn't even involved in this case. Even though she wrote a statement on the day of the crime when it happened, that she did not get a good look at the perpetrator that came in the store and did the robbery because she was in the back of the store. Right. right. You know, she admitted that she didn't know really what was going on. She just seen a man come in there and, and you know, uh, she knew something was going on wrong. She, when she seen, you know, uh, a threat or something like that, whatever, she said she left out the exit, out the back door of the exit okay. of the store. Okay. Okay. Um, so... She was, that was the only involvement. The investigation was the only thing she was like, she wasn't even at the trial. She didn't even testify. Um, there was a victim on that was on stay, and I think the manager, um, she made a statement on her behalf. You know, she, I guess since they was employees, you know, she may have her or something that she didn't give a good description or whatever, whatever. But, you know, um, that's perjury testimony. No witness, no no witness can get on stand and make allegations or make uh, statements about what another victim without their present being in court, you know, without that victim being in court. So, um, I should have not been found guilty on that person, you know, with that person. And, that, you know, it's a lot of other loopholes because not everybody that was in that unit in bathroom, I run. Okay. I didn't take any, I, 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 may, I may have taken something from maybe three or four people. I don't remember who it was. It was so long ago. And then at the time of the crime, I couldn't really them. just, you know, um, remember, you know, how many victims I know some people turned over some things, jewelry, money, or whatever. But all in regards, Jay, um, my whole, you know, reason for, you know, this interview and sharing the story is excessive. I'm sorry. Yeah, um, all this time, they don't add up. It don't add up. And, um, okay. So are you looking for a pro bono lawyer? Like, what do you need that could give you assistance um <laughs> jay i'll take any type of assistance right about now you know if it's um right but what is it that you think what do you feel that you need that's going to be beneficial like do you need a lawyer to get on your case like what is it that you need um i would actually need um someone um if it's it is a mouthpiece, somebody, you know, like a retained counsel, 